STV, votre télé. The Grand Master of the Supreme Order of Malta begins a four-day official visit to Cameroon. Giacomo Diallo Torre del Tempo di Sangitino is expected to meet President Paul Bia Tuesday to deepen relations between Cameroon and the order. Six people have died and 43 others receiving treatment following cholera incidences in the north and central regions of the country. Tonight, we tell you what authorities, as well as the population, are doing to ensure that the outbreak does not extend to the Litua region. Those are the top stories. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the English Prime Time on Spectrum Television. We begin right away in security, where the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense has promised tough times for separatists in the northwest and southwest regions, as well as other elements threatening the territorial integrity of Cameroon. Speaking at a solemn ecumenical service to pay homage to fallen soldiers in Yaoundé, Joseph Betty Asomo has warned as separatists to drop their weapons or they will face the wrath of the state. He maintains that Cameroon remains one and indivisible and government will do all it takes to bring order to the restive zones. Religious authorities who were present have used the occasion to pray for peace and beg God for a return to normalcy in the restive uh, spots in the country. In politics, militants and supporters of the governing Cameroon's People's Democratic Movement, the CPDM in the Ocean Division of the South region, uh, ha have called on their party leader, President Paul Bia, to either launch or conclude presidential campaigns in their area. At the Grand Rally in Kribi over the weekend, they have pledged to support their champion to another victory. John Paul Samar reports. The presidential race is on, and the elites of the Ocean Division are mobilizing to throw their weight behind Paul Bia for the 7th October elections. This follows his declaration to run for another seven years at the helm of the CPDM party. We are very happy today because we made a lot of calls for him to represent the party at the upcoming elections and he has heard our calls. We also made a tour to the nine departmental sections with several messages to the population. This gathering, which held in Kribi, chief town of the Ocean Division, witnessed a massive attendance by top ministers and former ones, as well as traditional rulers of the locality. The Ocean Division looks set to throw their support behind Paul Bia, who they say is and has always been their natural candidate. Barrister Akaramuna has uh, dropped uh, his uh, documents uh, officially uh, making known his uh, plans to contest the 2018 presidential elections. The candidate endorsed by the People's, Democratic, the People's Development Front, PDF, was accompanied by heads of two allied uh, political parties. Isaac Fozu, who also leads the Movement for Emergence and Citizen Awareness has also fired in his candidacy at the elections Cameroon headquarters in uh, Yaoundé. At least uh, six aspirants have already uh, declared their candidacy for the 2018 presidential elections, including President Paul Bia, in an exercise expected to end on July 19, 2018. Now, candidates who are vying for the post of president have certain conditions they must meet as we gather in this report. The Electoral Code makes it clear that candidates going in for the presidential elections must be at least 35 years old by the date of the polls. He or she must have permanent residence in the country for at least 12 months and must have his name in the Electoral Register. Candidates must be invested by a political party or be presented by 300 personalities drawn from the 10 regions of the country. 
their signatures on the presentation letter must be legalized by an administrative authority. Presidential aspirants must also submit a file within 10 days from the date of the convocation of the Electoral College comprising the name, surname, date and place of birth, profession as well as residential area. The file should also contain the color and symbols of the party to be used for the printing of ballot papers. Attached to this file is a copy of the investiture certificate, certified copy of birth certificate not older than three months, a declaration from the candidates pledging to respect the constitution, a certificate of nationality as well as a certificate of non-conviction. The file will be submitted to a LECAM and a copy sent to the Constitutional Council against a receipt. The candidate is then expected to pay a caution of 30 million francs CFA to the state treasury. The Electoral Council who will study the files can either accept or reject the candidature. The list of approved candidates is expected 60 days from voting day. Now, the chairman of the Front Line Opposition Party in the country, the Social Democratic Front, SDF, is 77 years old. John Fundy has used his birthday to call for God's intervention in the ongoing armed conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. This was uh, during the Thanksgiving service at the Presbyterian Church Musang in Bamenda. Lovenberg reports. The chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nijon Fundi, who is now 77, during his Thanksgiving service reiterated that if not of God's intervention, the Anglophone crisis would have been worse. When I thought of coming to give thanks to God, there were so many controversies. Then I thought of coming to give thanks to Thanksgiving service had a massive turnout with administrators like the Governor of the Northwest Region, the Senior Division Officer for Mezam, all present. SDF senators, parliamentarians, mayors, and some fronts of the Northwest Region were all part of the service. I will confess to you that when he called us in Yaoundé and said he wanted to make a Thanksgiving, we told him that that was a mockery. You could not be carrying out a Thanksgiving when our brothers and sisters are being killed in the bushes. But he took time to tell us that it was rather the time to make the thanksgiving. The officiating priest during his message centered on peace, hypocrisy and reconciliation. Just like we told you in the headlines, the Grand Master of the Supreme Order of Malta is expected to begin a four-day visit to Cameroon today on the invitation of the Head of State President Paul Bia According to the program from the, civil, from the civil cabinet of the presidency, His Highness Giacomo Diallo Torre del Tempo de Sangetino he will be welcomed by Prime Minister Philemon Yang at the Yaoundé Simalen Airport this evening. He is expected to meet President Paul Bia tomorrow at midday for high-level talks that uh, will be expected to strengthen ties between Cameroon and the other. He will also visit some structures that are being run by the other in the country, in Jombe, Mokolo, and some parts of the far north region of the country. In Cameroon, say about six people have died, while 43 others are receiving treatment following cholera incidences in the north and center regions of the country. The Minister of Public Health, Andrew Mamafuda, has promised that measures are being taken uh, to prevent a spillover to other parts of the country. Harry Wana spoke to the regional delegate of public health for the Litua region and sought to know from him measures 
taken by local authorities to prevent an outbreak. This report. The cholera epidemic that struck the African continent in 2010 seemed to have gone on a recess for some years now, thanks to a collective global effort. But the government of Cameroon has always been on alert to prevent any unforeseen circumstances. There is no special time for us to carry out a survey on the different diseases that exist in the country. In the littoral region alone, the 24 district hospitals do send their reports every Tuesdays, which I later forward to Yaoundé on Thursdays to the Ministry of Public Health for further control. Cholera, which is caused by a bacterium transmitted through contaminated food or drinking water, usually leads to acute diarrhea. Thus, public health officials had to come up with a new communication strategy to help detect cholera patients in neighborhoods in the littoral region, which is carried out by community health actors. However, it should be stated here that since the start of this year 2018, the north and central regions have had reported cases of cholera outbreak that was quickly brought under control thanks to effort made by the Ministry of Public Health to prevent it from spreading to other regions of the country. News of the cholera outbreak in the north and central regions of the country is keeping inhabitants of Douala and the littoral region in general on the alert. Speaking to Henry Wana, some residents in Douala say they are taking precautions to avoid a spillover into their respective localities. His report. Since the month of May 2018, six persons have died in Cameroon as a result of cholera outbreak, according to recent report from public health ministry officials. But to some Douala denizens, they are ignorant about the outbreak of the pandemic. <laughs> to the few who are aware, proper hygienic conditions should be of paramount importance to every household since Douala is still to be affected. We know of that. So probably this year, concerning Douala that uh, I recite, we, don't, we have not heard of that now. But that does not mean that it cannot happen. But the first measure to take is to wash your hands well before consuming anything that you eat, especially fruits. You wash the fruit also before you consume them. There is no doubt most Douala city dwellers won't want to experience what happened in 2010 whereby more than 750 lives were lost as a result of the disease repeat itself in 2018. Cholera, which is a very dangerous disease, comes mostly from the toilet system and uh, waste, the hygienic condition of our environment. So I give the blame to the government mostly, so to the councils, whereby they spend their time moving around shops, stores, call, talking of uh, hygiene is celebrity, that means hygiene and uh, cleanliness, leaving the essential places that they have to move to in the quarters to control the toilet system of the inhabitants to see whether are they using their toilet well to avoid cholera and other diseases. With the rainy season already around the corner, this is a time for council officials to double their effort and ensure the population is living in a healthy environment to prevent the region from being affected by the cholera outbreak. The rainy season is intensifying in the littoral regional capital, Douala, with a negative impact on the population. Parts of the city have been experiencing floods, making accommodation conditions and movement tough for locals in these areas. John Paul Sama braved the early morning rains in Douala and takes us to Beseke Block 2, uh, one of the flood-prone areas in the city of Douala. His report. Here we are at uh, Beseke 2 uh, in Bonaberry Dwala, where you can hear the cries of the population uh, who are visibly uh, stuck uh, in water with water living all around them and they are forced uh, to live in this uh, situation uh, as uh, a result of uh, the uh, rains uh, that fell heavily uh, last night uh, with uh, their cry uh, being that, that uh, someone should come to their aid.
an aid which might serve as a stitch in time as the population of this neighborhood in Dwala 4 go through a tough time whenever it rains. Our children are no more here because there's just no way that children can stay inside this area where there's water flowing inside the house as if it is built on a river. Since 2016, when Satom started uh, this work, the former commander who was here, he went and saw those people and asked for ground to fill the camp. Instead of filling the camp, he took, a, he took a, the ground and filled one, somebody's plot, the mayor of Melon. Mayor of Melo, he has, he's the one who has blocked this water like this up to now. Came down, saw me, and this present commander of Sape promised us that any moment from now, I'll bring my caterpillars and come and open this water. It is about two months now. It's not yet come. All this happening under the watchful gaze of administrative authorities of the municipality who have sent inspection teams to this crisis stricken neighborhood. Until date, the result remains the same. You can imagine, since 12 o'clock in the night up to now, everybody is up. Do not sleep because of the water. They promised to come and open this water. Uh, about one month ago, uh, the deal, this present deal in Bonaberry now, came down here. He, he saw the place and promised us that he was going to do something. The mayor of this Dwala 4 has sent two commissions here. 2017, I wrote to him several times. He sent one uh, a commission headed by one wife or wife or something like that. He came down here. They asked transport. He gave them. From the council to here, I gave 10,000 francs just for transport. They came and went back with, with no result. Later on, uh, I went there again. He sent another, we had a meeting. I told him they, what those people have, why I have not yet replied. I wrote a letter, went and gave him personally on the table when we were chairing that meeting. I went and gave the letter to him. He took it, sent another one, whether they call him Shamforin or something like that. He came down here. He still asked me 10,000 and all the like. I gave him. They came down here. Up to now, no result. They, however, fear for their lives as they may contract deadly diseases as a result of this flood. So I don't really know whether they want somebody to die. Look, yesterday I heard over radio that there's cholera in Yaoundé. And look at this water. There are pit latrines all around here. Eh? Water is coming from latrines to enter houses. If cholera breaks here and kill people, is that when the government will react? It's, it's impossible. So I don't know where we are going to. Their cry is for those in charge to help them through this nightmare. And the people, the authorities that are concerned, maybe the, 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 the governor, the senior duo and others, to, take, to look at these pictures and imagine if had it been they had their own family member living here, would they be happy? We are in the center, center town. Look at the main road to here, it's not up to 50 meters. And look the way we are living. That is a uh, support from here come. People who are out to save, people who are at risk. What are they doing for us now? We are at risk. Because there is a risk of cholera. A child can be drowned. There is cholera that can shock a child inside the house. To make matters worse, cars cannot maneuver their way into or out of the area. Most of them have been living in this place for 32 years with documents to attest that they belong in this area, which they say is not a risk zone. And if they are to live a normal life today, this is what they've been condemned to do all throughout this day. Gilbert Mange, John Paul Sama, STV News, Douala. Thank you very much, uh, John Paul. Out of the country, at least seven persons have been injured after police fired tear gas and water cannons at protesters 
who marched on government buildings and stormed an airport in southern Iraq. Iraqis have been rallying this past week against corruption and poor governance, which has led to low living standards in the oil rich region of Basra. Details with the VOA. Iraqis are tired of poor services, unemployment, and the rising cost of living, which they blame on corruption and incompetence of government officials. The protests have spread from Basra to several other cities in the region. This demonstration happened because of the deprivation for the past 16 years. Several successful governments have been in power in the city of Basra, and none have provided services and good life for the residents. In fact, the residents are lacking the most basic services. The mounting anger comes at a politically sensitive time in Iraq following May 12 parliamentary elections, in which a coalition led by a popular cleric won the most seats and made it hard for Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi to form a government. One dead, one injured. Who is responsible for all this? Abadi, you are an honorable man. You're chosen by the people. Give us our rights and we'll pull back. We're going to demonstrate peacefully. We're going to block roads in order to obtain our rights. Abadi has tried to prevent the Basra protests from boiling over by announcing investments in the area. He has also promised that his caretaker government would release funds to Basra for water, electricity and health services. Despite his effort, the rallies have spread to the cities of Amara, Nasiriya and Najaf, where protesters stormed the airport. Disgruntled people also rallied in the capital Baghdad. The government has deployed troops and imposed curfews to curb the unrest. Our duty is to provide security for all Iraqis and also to listen to all the demands and to salute peaceful protesters. But those who assault the state institutions, the security forces and investments in the oil fields and disrupt the aspirations of the people should be held to account. Basra province is home to the oil fields that account for the vast majority of Iraq's oil exports. But the region remains underdeveloped with crumbling infrastructure, chronic power outages, poor water quality and uncollected waste. Electricity cuts have made life unbearable during the heat wave that has reached 48 degrees Celsius in some days. Slatica Hoke, BOA News, Washington. Sports football, Cotton Sport of Garwa have turned uh, Future FC of Banjun by four goals to zero in the third one of the MTN Elite One Championship. The champions elect have therefore cemented their supremacy at the top of the table this season. Uh, two other games also recorded a 4 0 score as Dragon FC uh, edged Yafut and Ice Fortuna defeated Star Renan. A Dingsport fell at home to APG on full by one goal to zero. It was a one all tie between Colombe du Sud and Union of Douala. Astro of Douala uh, trashed uh, Egle of the Menwa 3 0 away from home as New Stars and Young Sport Academy secured a virgin tie. It was also a similar scoreline for Union for UMS of Loom and Bamboo Tools, as well as Fufu of Baham and Unispor of Bafa. And it's on that note that we pull the curtains on this edition of the English Prime Time on Spectrum Television. We thank you very much for your kind attention. Take the rendezvous same time tomorrow for another edition of the newscast. From us in Douala, it's good night. Bye-bye. STV, votre télé.